Hans was a soldier in the German Afrika Korps during World War II. He was stationed in North Africa, fighting against the British. Every day he felt a mixture of relief and guilt. He was relieved because he was not on the Eastern Front, where many of his friends had been sent. The stories he heard from there were terrifying. The sun was setting over the endless desert, casting long shadows. Hans sat by his tent, cleaning his rifle. The heat of the day was finally giving way to a cooler evening. He could hear the distant rumble of tanks and the occasional burst of gunfire. Despite the dangers, he felt lucky to be in Africa. Hans remembered his friend Karl, who had been sent to the Eastern Front. The last letter he received from Karl described the brutal cold, the endless snow, and the fierce battles against the Soviet soldiers. Many German soldiers did not survive the harsh conditions and relentless attacks. Hans shuddered at the thought. In Africa, the war was different. The heat was intense, but it was a dry heat. There were no freezing temperatures, no frostbite, and no snowstorms. The battles were tough, but at least they had warm food and a place to sleep without worrying about freezing to death. One evening, Hans and his fellow soldiers gathered around a small fire. They talked about their lives before the war and their hopes for the future. Hans shared stories of his hometown, a small village in Germany, and how he dreamed of returning there someday. I'm glad we're here in Africa, Hans said, looking at his comrades. I've heard terrible things about the Eastern Front. At least here, we have a chance. The others nodded in agreement. They all had heard the same stories. The Eastern Front was a place of endless suffering. Here in Africa, despite the hardships, there was a strange beauty in the vast deserts and the clear, starry nights. The battles against the British forces were fierce. The British were determined and well-equipped. Hans and his comrades often found themselves in difficult situations. One such battle took place near a small oasis. The Africa Corps had received orders to hold the position at all costs. The oasis was crucial for both water supply and strategic advantage. The British forces attacked at dawn. Hans was in a foxhole with his friend Dida, both men peering through the sandbags, waiting for the enemy to appear. The first sign was the distant roar of engines, followed by the sight of British tanks and infantry advancing. Here they come, Dieter muttered, gripping his rifle tightly. Hans nodded, his heart pounding. The Africa Corps opened fire, and the desert erupted in chaos. Bullets whizzed through the air, and explosions shook the ground. Hans focused on his training, aiming carefully and firing at the advancing soldiers. He felt a grim determination he had to survive. He had to protect his comrades. The battle raged for hours. The British were relentless, but the German soldiers held their ground. Hans saw friends fall, wounded or killed, but there was no time to mourn. He kept fighting, moving from one position to another, taking cover and returning fire. At one point, a British tank broke through the line, its heavy machine gun sweeping the area. Hans and Dieter diatived for cover behind a rocky outcrop. The tank was a terrifying sight, its metal hull gleaming in the harsh sunlight. We need to take it out, Dieter said, his voice barely audible over the noise of battle. Hans nodded. They grabbed an anti-tank weapon and crawled closer, using the rocks for cover. The tank's machine gun kept firing, but the two soldiers pressed on. When they were close enough, Hans took aim and fired. The anti-tank round hit the tank, and there was a deafening explosion. The tank stopped moving, smoke billowing from its wreckage. Good shot, Dieter said, clapping Hans on the shoulder. The British attack eventually faltered, and they began to retreat. The oasis was secure, but at a high cost. Hans looked around at the aftermath of the battle the bodies of fallen comrades and enemy soldiers, the wreckage of tanks and vehicles. It was a scene of destruction, but also of survival. That night, Hans and his comrades tended to the wounded and buried the dead. They were exhausted, but there was a sense of relief. They had survived another day. Hans sat by the fire, writing a letter to his mother. Dear mother, he wrote, the battles here are fierce, and we have lost many good men. 
but I am still safe. The desert is harsh, but it is better than the cold of the Eastern Front. I think of home often and hope to return some day. As the months went by, the war in Africa continued. Hans and his unit moved from place to place, engaging in battles and setting up camps. They faced challenges, but they also had moments of calm. Hans learned to appreciate the small things a good meal, a quiet night, the laughter of his friends. One day, news came that the Afrika Corps would be withdrawing. The Allies were gaining ground, and it was no longer safe for them to stay. Hans felt a pang of fear. Where would they go next? Would he be sent to the Eastern Front after all? But for now, he was still in Africa. He took a deep breath, savoring the warm, dry air. Whatever the future held, he would face it with the strength he had gained here. He was a soldier, and this was his duty. As they packed up their camp, Hans looked around one last time. The desert had been his home for many months. It was a harsh place, but it had kept him safe from the horrors of the Eastern Front. He felt a deep gratitude. With his rifle slung over his shoulder and his pack on his back, Hans marched with his unit, ready for whatever came next. He didn't know where he would go, but he carried with him the memories of the desert, the stars, and the camaraderie of his fellow soldiers. And for now, that was enough.